Hello and welcome to the Middle East Forum's uh, regular webinar series. My name is Sam Westrop. I'm the director of the Forum's Islamist Watch project. Uh, I'm delighted to have with me today Susanna Johnston, uh, the investigative reporter for Focus on Western Islamism. Um, this is a new media outlet set up recently by the Forum to uh, serve as a hub, a repository for reporting and investigative work on the question of Islamism uh, in the West, specifically lawful Islamism. Now, uh, in recent months, protests at Oberlin College have uh, been organized by Iranian dissidents unhappy at the presence of Mohammad Jafar Mahalati, an academic accused of ties to the Iranian regime. Um, Susanna is here to uh, tell us about Mahalati, to tell us about the Iranian regime's efforts to infiltrate and influence uh, Western society, and particularly through, through campus academics such as Mahalati. Uh, so without further ado, uh, I turn to Susanna. Uh, Susanna, welcome. Um, I understand uh, you've written several pieces now on Professor Mahalati. Could you start off by telling us a little bit about him, who he is, uh, why protesters might be upset uh, uh, at his ties to the regime and, and what he believes and what he represents. Sure. Uh, so he's uh, he's Iranian. He uh, served as ambassador to the UN for Iran in the late 1980s. Uh, and while he was ambassador uh, for ser serving as ambassador, uh, the Iranian government executed secretly, secretly um, and I, I, I think secret is a little bit um, under discussion there. It's perhaps not as secret as the Iranian regime would like us to think that it was, but they executed somewhere between three to 5,000 people. And family members here in the US, uh, Iranian dissidents, have realized who Mahalati is uh, and are very upset about it and would like him removed. Um, he, so when he, served, when he was serving as ambassador, he says that he didn't know anything about what was going on. Uh, Amnesty International came out with a report in 2017 that offered some new information that demonstrates that he probably did know what was going on and that he was complicit in a cover-up of what happened. And I think that that really got the attention of several people, Iranian dissidents in the US. And uh, I think uh, rightfully so, they're upset about it and trying to get him removed from the college. Okay, so what is the exact nature of um, Mahalati's ties with the regime? Uh, what was his position in Iran? And does he continue to advance regime interests now here in the United States? Sure. Um, so he did have a high up position in the Iranian government. Um, I think it was in the foreign ministry, but I would, I would have to go back and double check that part. I, the, the part that I'm most sure of is his uh, ambassadorship for Iran. And if you look at those positions, people who have served in that ambassador role um, are not, it's not just anyone who has, you know, it's not just a nobody in Iran who gets those positions. Um, so that's, that's you know, your, uh, probably your, your biggest connection right there. I'm sorry, what was your other question? Well, Given that he was the senior regime figure, he's right. now an academic, a respected academic in many ways at a respected college, you know, Oberlin College. Um, mm -hmm. What are his ties now with the regime? What, what, or at least what are the accusations surrounding his current ties with the regime or his current role promoting Tehran's interests in the United States? Right. Uh, so there's been some recent information, and I, Sam, you know that I wrote about a little bit of this recently, that... He serves on the board of a journal uh, that is an Iranian-based journal, and it's called Sepahar Sayazat, and I'm probably butchering the pronunciation. I apologize, don't speak Persian, but this Iranian-based journal has praised Hezbollah last fall, and they also have regime-tied people on the, sitting on the board. So as far as, you know, even if Mahalati wanted to say, oh, you know, I, I didn't know that they produced that kind of information, he could look at his fellow board members, um, which frankly, having other board members that are Iran regime tied, one of them uh, works for the deputy, um, he works for the foreign minister, um, the one, uh, Vahidi, who is tied, who's, there's an Interpol red notice against him right now. Um, and there's another guy who is IRGC, and there's another guy who recently praised Soleimani and said that he should be um, emulated. Um, 
So, you know, we took him out in 2020, the U.S. military, IRGC Cuds Force commander. Uh, and so Mahalati is serving on the board with a guy who um, praises Soleimani. Uh, and that that's a problem. <laughs> so that's that's one um, one big tie. Another is that uh, in 2018, an article came out smearing Mahalati. Um, it was a, a Farsi piece written by um, a fellow Iranian who uh, apparently had a bone to pick with Mahalati. And Mahalati, his name ended up being put on a dual national uh, suspect list in Iran. And Mahalati was very upset about that. He wrote a letter to then speaker Larajani uh, saying, no, that's not true. Everything is a lie. I am a value to the regime. Uh, he went on to demonstrate in his letter uh, what he sees as the importance of Shiite Iranian supremacy in the West and how he is crucial in fulfilling that mission. Uh, so there's there's no question in that letter um, where where he stands. Okay. And so, another and one other thing that we have not. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, please continue. No, I was just going to say one other thing that I I found out recently is that Mahalati's Ilex Foundation. He founded, I believe in the early 2000s, he founded his own nonprofit in Boston. The Alex Foundation hosted former president of Iran, Katami. Uh, that guy, so, you know, that is suspect, you know, in and of itself, you know, Mahalani's organization hosts this guy, you know, he was, he's been called the silver tongued Ahmadinejad, you know, uh, and he's, he bragged about the uh, nuclear program uh, and developing it. So, uh, that's another suspect tie right there, and that Mahalati's organization would host him is obviously problematic. Um, and then tying it also back to 1988, and you know when Mahalati's like, "Oh, I didn't have anything to do with that, uh, the massacre," you know, I didn't know about it, any of that. Um, well, Katami would have been somehow involved in that. Uh, so if he's trying, if Mahalati is trying to distance himself on a human rights, you know, basis, he's certainly not doing a very good job. Okay. Now, the, the 1988 massacre, which made, uh, has made international news at the time and, and ever since, uh, was the slaughter of, of a, a number of, a huge number of dissidents, particularly from a group called the MEK, I understand. So mm -hmm. is the opposition now that we're seeing to Malati, we're seeing protests at Oberlin, we're seeing uh, journalists writing about this, is this advanced by this group, the MEK, this very prominent Iranian dissident group, or is the opposition to Mahalati more widespread? Uh, are other Iranian dissidents of other networks also uh, 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 worried that a senior regime figure is in such a prominent academic position? That's a great question. As, a, as we both know, a lot of people are uh, sometimes get squeamish when, when you hear MEK uh, mentioned. But no, they're not all MEK. Um, in fact, the, the, one, the lead spokesperson for the group, her brother was a leftist. Uh, so she's, you know, working with, you know, fellow MEK, if that's, you know, fair to say, but no, they're not all MEK. Okay. And these protests, uh, these have been on campus. Does it include students at the university or is this mostly outside pressure? I, I think it's fair to say mostly outside pressure. Some students have been, fall, in, been involved, uh, but not the, they've had, uh, I believe, three protests on campus. Uh, but they've had a number around the world too. Uh, so they they protested in London. Uh, so this is they are working on making this you know a, a, a global movement to have this guy removed, and it's certainly worthy of international attention. Okay. Okay. So he's clearly seen as this important regime figure uh, by dissidents around the world who oppose the Iranian regime. Uh, is he the only one? Are there other academics? Are there other uh, uh, Iranian regime linked officials? Uh, uh, in other campuses, in other senior positions that you're worried about? In other words, do you believe Mahalati is part of a wider network, part of a, a, a broader problem of Iranian regime influence in the West? Um, definitely. And actually, he he personally mentions that in his letter to uh, Speaker of the Iranian Parliament, Larajani. He mentions, he's like, hey, I'm one of these persecuted Shiite professors. Uh, and he names, he, he does not name uh, the others, but he lists himself as being one of three. Uh, his sister and brother-in-law are also in academia. Um, we also know about another regime figure, Misavian. Um, So I, I definitely think that Mahalati, you know, could, could be, you know, a tip of an iceberg, you know, so to speak. I mean, it's not, he's not just one guy. 
Yeah, interesting. And and you know, when it when it comes to someone like Mahalati, I mean, he's not exactly in a position where he's influencing public policy or he's uh, got a direct line to to national politicians or journalists. So, what is Iran? If you were to speculate, what do you think Iran's interest is in? in working through the universities? What, what, what opportunity do you think Tehran sees in, in continuing to have links to someone like Mahalati? Well, frankly, I think it's something that uh, Iranians are being quite brilliant about. And I think, uh, unfortunately, I think a lot of Americans are very naive in thinking that academia does play a very crucial role in shaping future foreign policy. I mean, you know, if I, if my kids were to go to, you know, Princeton or Columbia and they believe their professors, they believe what they're being taught, they believe the versions of history, um, I, they're definitely being given a narrative. And if they don't know to question that, uh, that could be very problematic. And I, I've certainly seen that in, uh, certainly reflected in Washington DC politics, academia plays a big role. Now, as, as our Campus Watch program at the Middle East Forum has, has often said, there's not enough transparency and accountability when it comes to foreign funding of universities. So it's difficult for anyone to answer this question I'm about to put to you, but um, do you think Iranian money, uh, whether directly from the regime or through proxies in the US, uh, has anything to do with the appointment of people like Mahalati? Uh, definitely. Uh, I mean, we know about the Alavi Foundation, uh, which is oh, tell uh, us about that. Yes. yes the, so the uh, the DOJ, success, the Department of Justice, successfully prosecuted the Alavi Foundation. Uh, they are they were originally started as the Pahlavi Foundation uh, under um, under the Shah, and then uh, when the Shah fell. Uh, the foundation in the U.S. went back to the uh, control of the Iranian government, uh, and they rebranded it, and it became the it eventually became the Alavi Foundation. But what the U.S. government figured out <laughs> was that they were basically a front group for the regime, and they have given hundreds of thousands of dollars to Ivy League schools. Uh, interestingly, when Mahalati came to the U.S., his brother had been president of the Lobby Foundation and had at that time given a large amount of money to Colombia, after which Mahalati, uh, the brother of the guy who was running the Alavi Foundation, got a job as a professor there. And in fact, uh, Mahalati has worked at three other schools, or three, three schools, I believe, who received money from the Alavi Foundation. I'd be surprised if there's no connection there whatsoever. Uh, and I would not be surprised if uh, there's connection, you know, in other, in other areas as well. Something that uh, the DOJ should look into further. Okay, well, let me ask you that on this point. What should the federal government be doing about this question? I mean, the guy's a religion professor, so it's not like he's running a heads and bar cell, but sure. at the same time, he does appear uh, in, to, to some extent to be, in effect, an agent of, of a, a, a hostile foreign power. And we have all sorts of laws in the US regarding foreign agents and this sort of thing, uh, as well as restrictions on, in, on, on financing of universities. And uh, heaven knows there have been quite a few federal cases recently of academics being charged for taking money or for working on behalf of other foreign regimes and China comes to mind. So what should federal government be doing about people like Mahalati and other academics who also accused of Iranian regime ties and as well ties to other autocratic regimes in the Middle East? What is the government's role here? Hmm. You know, I think the, the first one would be upholding the laws that we have on the books, you know, um, really keeping track. For example, um, you know, Yale. <laughs> Um, didn't report, you know, hundreds of hundreds of thousands. They just didn't keep track of their foreign stuff. And so, who knows, you know, what happened with that? Um, that's that that should not be happening. Uh, and the the U.S. government should be keeping better tabs on that, you know. Um, so I, I think that's the first thing is keeping better tabs at the beginning. I do think that the laws um, make it. I do think it's it's too easy for foreign money to get filtered. To institutions, and I think that does need to be changed. Now, how you would actually work that in detail, uh, you know, gets more complex. Okay. Okay. Well, what else is there to look into here then? Um, 
Uh, we've talked about money, uh, but there are mosques, there are uh, 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 private grant making foundations. There's a very large Iranian and, and Shia Islamist network in the United States. Uh, is there any other aspect you're planning on looking into that you think we should be looking into? What is, in, in your opinion, is, is the Iranian regime and its network still much to be discovered uh, in the US? Uh, is there a lot more research that is required to understand Tehran's machinations uh, uh, over here? Yeah, I think definitely. Um, I think it's a highly under-researched area. Um, you know, I think we've spent, we've spent a great, a great, uh, a great deal of effort on Sunni networks uh, and Islamism there. Um, I, I think that the Shia networks, perhaps, you know, I, I think in in some ways there's a um, there's a, a greater degree of subtlety with Shia networks. I, you know, I, I could be I could be wrong about that, but that's my you know my my impression. Um, and so I think that I. I think there's possibly a lot more there that we're just kind of missing. And some of that's just because of our American style of expecting people to be a little bit blunter. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's, that makes sense. That's, that's interesting. Um, and, you know, we've mentioned this broader net network. Any other uh, universities in particular that you think we should be looking at when it comes to academics? Any other academics in particular that you think we should be paying closer attention to? Sure, Princeton and Georgetown for sure, but for different reasons. <laughs> um, you know, Mahalati, uh, you know, mentioned, you know, it's like, of course, this is expanding it, you know, beyond the Shia thing, but Mahalati uh, personally mentions his concern about Saudi influence at Georgetown, uh, which is fascinating that he considers that to be a problem. Interesting. Now, I forgot to mention at the beginning to the audience, my apologies. If you have any questions for Susanna, please uh, enter them using the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen and I'll, I'll get to them. I can see we have uh, a, a couple. Uh, I'll read one now before going back just to a, a few questions of my own. Um, one anonymous questioner asks um, where well, he compares the, uh, I'll, I'll read it. He said, are, are the current Iranian protesters comparable to the Russian Tsarist protesters who opposed Russian Bolshevism in the United States. In other words, were the massacres in Iran similar to Stalin killing off his enemies? Now, this is a more Iran-centric uh, question, but is this, is, 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 was, was Mahalati involved then in a very key purging of Iran's enemies? Is that what the 1988 uh, massacre was about? I think that MEK and leftist groups would agree with that assertion. Right, right. Now, the MEK, and just, I want to just get back to the MEK quickly, because- sure. You described it as an interesting group that that uh, you know people have rather different reactions to and in fact it was designated as a terrorist group in, in the west for quite a long time uh although the, the reasons for that i think are perhaps a little murky but uh, you mentioned this is not just the mek opposing people like Mahalati, but also leftist uh, iranian dissidents as well um so is that i mean traditionally i believe iranian dissidents have been really quite split it's quite fractious and groups would traditionally not work for the mek is someone like Mahalati, when you have these figures so clearly representing tehran's interests is uh is that enough then to overcome do you think divisions within the dissident community from what you've seen. In other words, is this a unifying force, the fear of these soft power elements of Iranian uh, networks here in our universities? Uh, to a certain extent, yes, because I, I've seen it. <laughs> um, I have seen some people coming together and uh, furious about what happened in 1988, um, very hurt by it and rightfully so, and also very concerned about what's happening now in Iran. Um, and wanting genuine, positive Iran, Iranian regime change. Okay, interesting, interesting. And um, uh, in terms that we talked about the, the, the political response to this, but what about the media response? Are you the only journalist covering this information or has there been interest uh, in, in local papers, local to Oberlin and US papers and other uh, 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 newspapers around the world? Sure. Uh, the college paper at Oberlin has been covering it, uh, and there are a few s smaller platform sites covering it, which is great. There is a, a small trickle here and there. Uh, it would be nice if some big organizations would pick it up, but, you know, we'll, uh, we'll get their attention, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Now, um, another question from um, 
the name is, is a little difficult to work out. I think it's from Alan. Uh, he asked, what is Mahalati's visa status? Is he here on a work visa, green card? Do we know that? Do we know if he's a US citizen or? I actually don't know. And I have been very curious about that because he, he says that he spends his time in Shiraz, Iran when he's not teaching, which has made me very, um, very curious about that. Great question. I really wish I knew the answer. Yeah. Now, something like that, of course, is not public source about him disclosing it. I, I think that um, it is sometimes possible to FOIA a list of institutions that have sponsored uh, uh, visas and green cards. So maybe that's one way to do that. But, you know, I think, yes, answering that question, Alan, would <laughs> will take us a while as we as we uh, delve through the bureaucratic means to try and guess. Um, uh, what about other, acad other academics serving Tehran? Are they also here on on, on, on visas? In other words, is this something that we can perhaps, the American government can perhaps deal with by reviewing the immigration status of some of these agents? Or are most of these American citizens from what you know? I, I do not know. Can't give you a definitive answer. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, we, we have another question more about the future of regime change in Iran, which I, mm. I, 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 I feel is, is slightly beyond our scope. So I apologize to JR Pride for, for ignoring that question. Um, we're almost out of uh, uh, time here. Um, I, I just wanted to get a, a sense, uh, Suzanne, though, lastly, of we, we talked about other uh, possible areas of research on this question of Shia uh, Islamism. Um, how important are the campuses, though, compared to the other? Uh, uh, facets of Iranian regime activity. Uh, are we making a mistake by over focusing on this uh, professor of religion at Oberlin College? Ultimately, does he not matter much compared to, say, the Iranian backed protest groups, the groups opposing sanctions, the groups lobbying on behalf of Tehran in, in the capital? Uh, or, or are academics important? Are they a key part uh, and a dangerous part of the dissident network that we should, in fact, be emphasizing in our, in our quest to expose Iranian regime activity? Uh, well, I suppose my answer is rather obvious since I'm, I'm doing this webinar with you, but uh, of course I think they're important, but I, I think that it's important to look at this as, as a piece that is giving information about how the Iranian, how Iranian infiltration works in the U.S. You know, so it's like if you look at the Alavi Foundation as a front group uh, and how money trickles through there, you know, even to medical aid organizations that are not really medical aid and that kind of thing, or to mosques that are um, not uh, serving uh, appropriate religious purposes. And, you know, of course, academic institutions, I don't think that, I don't think it's a uh, campus versus other types of organizations. I think it's more just another piece of the puzzle. Okay, interesting. Um, now, anyone who wants to read Susanna's two articles can do so by going to the Focus on Western Islamism uh, news site. That's at islamism.news. And I do encourage you to sign up to our mailing list uh, there. I also encourage you to sign up to the Middle East Forum mailing list at meforum.org so you can uh, hear about future webinars of this ilk. And I'm sure we'll be seeing Susanna again for more discussion of her investigations into various Islamist networks, whether Shia or not. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you all have uh, a very pleasant weekend. Thank you to Suzanne and uh, see you at the next one. Bye-bye. Thanks, Sam.